this is the night wolf howling at you and once again we have snuck into the technodrome in order to use krang's dimensional door to travel to eternia so we can take a look at the turtles of gray skull beastman figure the undercover henchman part of the masters of the universe ninja turtles crossover figure series On the back of the box, we see Beastman fighting against Mossman, which seems pretty appropriate considering that they originated from the same figure mold back in the day, and even today. Beastman did not trust the alien outsiders the moment the foot set foot inside Snake Mountain. Rather than become Krang's next mutated experiment, Beastman escaped to strike a bargain with He-Man. What he found instead left him shell-shocked. Honestly, that would have been a much better story than what we're getting in the comics. I would not have been opposed to them actually having Beastman's side with the Masters on this one. I think that would have been a much more interesting story than what they did in the mini-comic. Instead of having Beastman actually just being a spy sent to lure the Masters and the Turtles into a trap, it would have been far more interesting if he actually was on the side of the Turtles and the Masters for this case. There's no reason why we can't occasionally have a villain side with the heroes. Anyway, let's open this sucker up. It's actually kind of surprising that this is staying up on its own. None of the other ones did. Oh, it's probably because I left it in that one part. Anyway. We have the information sheet with the swappable parts. It's basically his armor. And we have the Wave 2 comic, The Belly of the Beast Man. Where on the front, we of course see the Shredder, which again, uh, if you saw my previous review for that one, is actually probably one of the best Shredders that I think we've seen in the Ninja Turtles line. We have what other toy tubers are calling the Shogun Skeletor, or at least Mega J Retro, I think is. So I will keep calling him that because that at least differentiates him from the regular Skeletor. And sadly, thanks to this being uh, not as interesting as the actual back of the box, we have the Turtles, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, Tila, and Man at Arms fighting against Beast Man, who definitely would have been a much cooler story if they'd stuck with the uh, Beast Man actually betraying Skeletor because of the craziness going on. The mutated Ram Man and a mutated version of Merman, which I can't wait for that deluxe figure to come out. He looks pretty cool. Inside, we start off our tale with Man-at-Arms telling Michelangelo all about He-Man and how he wields the power of Grayskull and rides a giant cat. Roth, on the other hand, is getting kind of irritated that Donatello is just messing with Roboto, which, again, it seems kind of weird, you know, that he's messing with Roboto. I'm not sure how creating, turning Roboto into metal head like if he brought metal head with him and combined the two together that would make more sense but it looks like he's just making him look like metal head but anyway because Raphael just wants to get shit done and leonardo's like well we need to have some patience dude we don't know what's going on and while they're doing that Tila's off on her own because you know she doesn't need to hear about he-man gaining the power of gray skull she just needs to know that he's got power but beast man shows up and Tila's like yo what are you doing here Yo, bitch, what up? And Beastman gets the crap kicked out of him. And I am always forever wondering, if you look at this scene here, where Tila's on top of Beast, or it looks like Tila's almost on top of Beastman, 
what is that? Is that supposed to be like the drool coming out of his mouth when he's hit? Because it looks to me like it's like a tentacle coming out of the back of his fur. But anyway, Tila did kick his ass and man at arms and Tila lock him in a uh, a cage. It's weird too because it looks like it's a cage hanging there. Like that's the sort of thing you might expect more from Skeletor than from the Masters. But anyway. Beastman tells them that he knows where He-Man is and that if they let him out, he will help them find him. Then he tells the story of how Skeletor detected some weird energy signature in the swamp and ordered and gathered, I should say, Merman, Fakor, Trapjaw, and himself, even though they make Trapjaw look like, more like Mousejaw because they didn't color in any of his armor, um, to go check it out with him. And that is where they find Krang and the Shredder. And Krang offers Skeletor the use of Mutagen to help them fight his enemies if he helps them fight his enemies. And we later see them using a dimensional portal. Although the portal in this case kind of looks like the ones that are made on Eternia. And not the ones that are from Krang's uh, dimension door. So maybe they combine together. And the two of them drink some kind of swill that looks like it is probably alcoholic of some sort. Like an ale. Which, if alcohol de destroys brain cells, what kind of effect would that have on a living brain like Krang? But we move on, and Beastman continues to tell his story. He didn't decided he did not want to go with because he felt that it was a dangerous thing to do, and he uh, his fight or flight uh, stuff said uh, flight, not fight. But he did see He-Man mutated, apparently, under Shredder's slime pit. Which, once more, I would like to say I want them to make Shredder's slime pit. And it does look like it's just a modified horde slime pit. And I'm just going to keep saying slime pit over and over again. Slime pit, slime pit, slime pit. So I don't see any reason why they couldn't make Shredder's slime pit and the horde slime pit at the same time. Let's get one more slime pit in there. So anyway, Beastman is like, I ain't sticking around this place. I'm going to go find the Masters and see if they can help. And that's when he got the shit kicked out of him by Tila. And for whatever reason, Beastman is the first person to be surprised by seeing the Ninja Turtles. But everybody agrees that they'll help. And they give Beastman some samurai armor because, you know, they just keep samurai armor laying around now, apparently. So as they start going crawling through, I guess, an Eternian version of a sewer, uh, we see Michelangelo say something about this being a trap and Taylor agreeing with him wholeheartedly. And because we can't do the more interesting story of Beastman actually betraying Skeletor, it turns out to be a trap. And Beastman jumps out of the way to let the uh, mutated folks, including uh, Slackor, Attack the Turtles, and Tila, and Men at Arms. I keep forgetting Men at Arms is there, to be honest with you. Like, all the green just kind of merges in with each other. No, Men at Arms isn't there. Come to think of it, neither is Donatello. Wow, I have not been paying attention at all, all these times. And I should have known better because earlier, you know, Donatello and Men at Arms were working on the uh, Roboto upgrade. I feel stupid. A fight ensues between the turtles, Tila, and the mutants. And they pull out the mutated He-Man. And, uh, you know, Tila probably just crapped herself with that expression. And uh, Michelangelo's like, Huh? I always imagined him a little less rabid. Like, you know? And, of course, you know, a fight ensues. And now with He-Man there, they're definitely outnumbered and outgunned and outmatched. But luckily, the Talon Fighter, and not a turtleized Talon Fighter, flies by and drops off Metal Bato, who again, as far as we can tell, was not a hybrid of Metalhead and Roboto, but just Roboto restructured to look like Metalhead. No, I'm sorry, I, like, there, there's no sign that Metalhead was brought into this. So, Metal Bato does help them to get away taking the slack that they had and just defending them. 
so that they can escape. Presumably all in the Talon Fighter, which not bad. A two seater holding six people. Or I guess two humans and four turtles. But they did also manage to get a sample of the slime at some point and still don't know how. Unless they're I guess technically they could be using the sample of the slime they found in the swamp earlier. And not the jar that Shredder was holding onto, which is kind of what I've been assuming for a while reading these, but maybe it happened off stage. But Tila does recommend that they go to Castle Grayskull for the answers. And uh, Michelangelo is creeped out because Castle Grayskull looks evil, which has always been an issue with uh, Masters of the Universe, right? The uh, hero's castle looks like the villain's face. Anyway, I still keep hoping that we will get a turtle-eyed sorceress and not just the sorceress eyes April O'Neil because I really don't think that figure looks that good so far. I might change my mind when she's in hand. I don't know. But the back again shows us Ram Man, the mutated battering ram, Beast Man, the undercover henchman, and Raphael, the hard-headed size specialist. And Shredder, the evil master of ninjutsu. Which, again, if you're not going to buy this line, I still suggest Shredder as just being one of the coolest figures. I was also far more impressed with Ram Man than I thought I would be. Like, I didn't... He was like the figure that I generally consider to be like the throwaway of the series. But I actually really liked him when I reviewed him. Beastman's shield design or shell shield is actually different. I mean, it's got the same kind of handle as everybody else's. But its design is actually different from the rest. And I don't know if this is supposed to be like battle damage or if it's just an issue with the way it was molded. But that's pretty cool. And just taking a quick look at this figure, um, he's also the only figure thus far that does not have a spot on his back to hook the shield to, which is kind of disappointing, to, to be honest. But Beastman here also kind of looks like he may have some of the least amount of remake of any of the figures. Man, uh, when I get a better look at these, uh, there's already some uh, hate issues with the head. So. Beastman's uh, face sculpt. I... I have another beast. I have the original beast man here too. The paint is different on the samurai beast man than it is on the regular one. Which kind of throws off looking at it. But it does kind of appear as if they are using the same head. Like beast man may be the first figure in this series that is just using his origins counterpart aside from them giving him a gripping hand instead of a slapping hand. Because even the harness is the same harness on him as well. Just painted slightly differently to go with the armor. So let's put him aside for now. The inside of his helmet is uh, sculpted to fit his head or match his head, including all the little bumps and stuff in it. The front of the helmet, it actually looks pretty cool and uh, makes him look like a very dangerous samurai. The question is, is it enough to... Yeah, I guess it is a tight enough fit that it does uh, stay in place. And it is the helmet is designed to work around his old harness. 
that being said though, there's no place to put the shield and let's go ahead and take a look at our articulation while he's in the most of his armor. Since this is basically just Origins Beastman repainted with a different hand. He has the ball joint in the head, which especially with the helmet on is actually hindered quite a bit by the harness. Even the up and down is a little bit hindered. But if we take it off, the up and down is still not that much. And actually, you still can't really twist his head very well. I mean, you can force it. But that is, again, forcing it. And as I mentioned before, if we take a look at his head here, there is a bunch of blue paint on his back of his head. So that's a bit of a disappointment. I'm not sure how I feel about uh, the way they did the nose on here. I think the vintage style nose. Oh, let's just take that head off too. Why not? And obviously, I'll do a better. I'll have the extra pictures up too when I do this. But I think I like the way they did the uh, little swoop up around his eye there. And I think they should they should have kept that. But then I think they should have gone ahead and colored his entire nose in that yellow instead of having it go down like that. Because I don't know, that just looks weird to me. But uh, please feel free to let me know what you think. Um, the blue on the lip is definitely more pronounced on the... Um, turtles version more so than in the original one but there is more of the face coloring going down around the lip also on the previous version and in this case uh, the teeth are fully painted on the front but not the sides and on my old beast man it's on the side also which honestly isn't right because uh, it's not filling in teeth at that point He's got slightly larger pupils too, or eyes, I guess you would say, where they like in the Turtles version, they filled in the entire eye area with the black, where on the origin style one, they did not. So that's an awful lot of head talk. Harness wise, arm goes up, arm goes down, the arm armor, <laughs> the arm armor. Does not like to stay in place. We can spin the whole arm around though. And then we have to try to work the armor back up. Which of course when it's up there it kind of hinders it. But when you start moving it, it does slide down. So it's going to be one of those things where you're probably going to pose this figure for your display. And then you will just leave push, or push the armor in place afterwards. He does have the standard elbow bend and... Not quite 90 degrees. Does have a little pin for a twist. He's got his standard gripping hand on the right. And it can open and close. Not open and close. It can hinge in and out. And once again, we have to put that armor shoulder piece in place. He has a waist swivel. Which is not really hindered by his harness or his skirt piece. He can kick up. He can kick back. He can kick over. And that's about it for that. The skirt is cut in a way that really does not hinder too much of his actual leg movement. So that's a bonus. Though I wouldn't probably want to have him sitting in a vehicle with it. Because that will just uh, mutilate the plastic as it settles into a new position. We have a less than 90 degree bend at the knee per the usual origin style. And of course the little spin. We do have the boot cut, or in this case the fur cut. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. We have a hinge going up and down on the foot and a spin. And like I said, the one difference really between him and the regular origins one figure wise himself 
is that he has a gripping hand over here instead of the slapping hand. And of course, the arm armor is different. You know, if they had just thrown in, um, if they had just thrown in these, this would have been a great figure for anybody who missed out on the Vintage Beast Man, or yeah, the Origins Beast Man. So along with the shell shield, he does come with a whip that looks. Honestly, I think what they should have done was given us two versions of this. Because this looks a lot like Ivy's whip from uh, Soul Calibur. Because it looks like all of these little chinks should um, go together and form a sword. And they should have given us that sword because that would have been awesome. Like I realized they couldn't, they, for this price, they couldn't like actually have separate pushable ball joints to make it into that sword. Although that would have been really badass. And if there's any talented people who can actually uh, do that, please do that and uh, let us know how much it costs to uh, pay for it. Because I would actually consider buying that. Because the one problem I always have with whips is I don't like, I don't like them being positioned, you know? Because like, I guess this kind of resembles what the whip would look like if you're whipping it forward. And I suppose, I suppose this could be from the back. But most of the time, I think when people actually use a whip, they tend to do it from kind of the side and down, I think, unless they're doing like a show, and then they'll do it from the top. But anyway... I got clumsy hands. Overall, this is a really great Beast Man figure. Uh, if you don't have a vintage one, it's not too bad. If you want to use that for your um, Origins figure. And actually, if you've got Moss Man, who's currently on, clearancing out at a lot of Walmarts for around $25, shame to the rest of us who paid $40 for him, um, you do have the yellow armor that you can go with him. In fact, maybe I should order a second Beast Man so I can have him wearing that armor. Anyway... Let me know what you think of this version of Beast Man. Are you planning on picking him up or just going to let him sit on the shelf if he actually shows up at retail and not just order online? And also, what do you think, honestly, about them not having a spot on the back of this version to actually put his uh, shield back there like they did with all the other ones? So... And I hope you uh, enjoyed this enough to maybe subscribe, give it a like, and I give you a peace and love in response.